I'm here the morning after the premiere of Hijack's Redundant Ready Reading Radish Red Eye. And uh, my name is Michelle Steinwald. We're going to have a conversation with Kristen Van Loon and Arwen Wilder. Hello. 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 <laughs> Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good Thanks morning. for being here this morning after the show. Um, we've talked a little bit. I just want to go through the show. There's so much source material that has influenced it. This has been a three-year process, and it's your 20th year anniversary as a collaborative duo. So I want to touch on all of that and uh, ask you questions and just hear what uh, you have to say about uh, this brilliant piece. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the piece starts. Uh -huh. The first thing we see is uh, somebody playing piano. Mm. How did that come apart? Up, up, <laughs> about. Yeah. yeah. We see the piano playing as a pre-show. Uh huh. Um, so pre-start. Uh huh. The. The people who play the piano in the pre-show, one of them is the costume designer mm -hmm. and one of them is the crew chief, mm -hmm. uh, technician. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, significant for us. I think not so much as a, a joke, like ha ha, they can play the piano too, but um, I think uh, it's a, a worldview that I believe is expressed in this piece overall in terms of the range of performers and that uh, in terms of importance mm -hmm. of who you look at and what is important mm -hmm. and who might ha be the super talented one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the piano is on stage as a beautiful object. It's a, it's a site specific mm -hmm. thing. The walker has this beautiful, huge piano, um, and it doesn't um, get played so much as an instrument through the rest of the piece. But um, but it's it's there as a scenic piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think uh, that is I'm proud of us for pulling that off. It's an incredibly wasteful. Gesture. It's a decadent gesture uh -huh. to have it out there, and it and yet was. You didn't have it tuned. That's true. <laughs> that was that was a little bit efficient on our part, mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, so we love that, and it was great to make the whole piece like that, and then pretty late in the game decide to then uh, not be quite as wasteful with it. Mm -hmm. To go ahead and let it. Mm -hmm. be played if it's out here. Mm -hmm. And it's also um, foreshadowing the, the piano music that gets sampled throughout the whole show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely uh, a lot of flow between the music simply heard and music representing concept mm -hmm. and um, also so it's really funny for us to have just an actual sculptural object of a piano in the space foreshadowing it. Mm -hmm. I want you to get back to the conceptual part, but maybe as we go through the piece, mm -hmm. you can kind of tie it. It'll yeah. tie together. The beginning is a, bit, a great place to do that, yeah. actually. Yeah, if do you, you want to talk about, yeah, for sure. The first part is. This will take us back a bit, the first thing you hear when all nine dancers enter, mm -hmm. you hear two things, perhaps. Um, one is through the sound system, a recording of Neil Medlin performing a cover of the song Dynamite, mm -hmm. disco hit, um, with his own story um, stuck in the middle. And we made a piece about a year and a half ago um, for the Bedlam 10 Minute Play Festival uh, where we had how many performers? Eight? Maybe. Yeah. 
um, performers, and that's when we started listening, watching this YouTube video mm -hmm. over and over again of Neil, of Neil. Mm -hmm. singing this, and uh, went through a range of options of how to score that dance, and we chose to um, have no music playing during the piece, and then we do have music playing, which is um, kind of a drum and bass, just kind of disco thing in the entrance, and it cuts out, and that starts the dance. Mm -hmm. And we titled the dance Earl and Susan in Neil Medlin's cover of Dynamite. So the song is a title. Mm -hmm. uh, and then finally, a year and a half later, we found a way to include the song itself. And you've talked about that story that Neil goes through about mm. Earl being the center of the attention, but actually Susan is the center of the universe. The universe, <laughs> yes. I didn't know if that was <laughs> it's true, the center of the universe. Yes. And, uh, and as, as a way to prime the audience to see the fringe. Yeah, that's beautifully put. Mm. <laughs> the The... Choice to allow, we love that YouTube video. We love the way Neil Medlin does that whole thing, but the choice to include it, we kept committing to a rule that all the music in the show was going to be piano. Mm -hmm. And it could be any kind of piano, weird, experimental. It could be lectures about piano, it didn't have to be performance, it could be pop songs with piano, it could be every, every weird in-between, mm -hmm. but it was all going to be piano. And, and then we broke that rule, and I think that's, um, <laughs> that's what we do. Mm -hmm. That's how we make all of our decisions, is we make a rule for how we're going to make the decision, mm -hmm. and we hold to it really hard and fast <laughs> for years, and then, um, and then we gleefully break it. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a lot of glee in the performance last good, night. There good. was a lot of like having a blast, you good. know? Yeah. Because in a way it felt, uh, um, I was relieved. I was really happy with that performance, but in a way felt a little tight. And that, that first section to the Neil Medlin <clears> is six <throat> minutes long mm -hmm. and we're moving glacially yep. slowly. Mm -hmm. And, um, We've been practicing it a very long time, and we all should have known how scary mm -hmm. and hard it would be to be so exposed, yeah. failing, because it's a, it's a huge balance problem to move mm -hmm. that slowly. Mm -hmm. um, and I exit shortly after it, and I'm down there, and it was so fun to watch uh, dancers, whenever they had the chance to exit, Sigh. <laughs> um, so, the hardest part is done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think um, uh, I'm so happy we get to do it a couple more times mm -hmm. to, to feel the glee throughout. And, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm. It's great to have so much at stake in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I don't regret that we all needed a big sigh after it. But I want to say about that movement that because uh, that's a phrase we that were, comes up several yes. times throughout the piece. Yes, and the way that was made, Kristen got the chance uh, uh, multiple times to go and study material for the spine with mm -hmm. Steve Paxton. Mm -hmm. And she, that was happening right before we started the piece and, and during the, the whole time that mm -hmm. we were working on it. And she would come back to Minneapolis with all this information, all, this, all these spine exercises and information. And I was trying to get as much of that mm -hmm. out of her mm -hmm. um, while it was still fresh. Mm -hmm. And so that phrase really came from trying mm -hmm. to process that material mm -hmm. uh, and, and find my way into it Mm -hmm. via Kristen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another thing that's set up at that beginning moment is um, the laughing that's happening in, yes. the, in response to Neil's story. Yeah. And I had several audience members last night feel that they had never laughed so much during a dance performance and that <laughs> I think that probably gave them permission oh. right away. 
yeah. to hear, even though it's another audience responding to another performance, mm -hmm. that it, it's set up. And, and mm -hmm. noticing with an audience, because I've seen the piece a few times in rehearsals, mm -hmm. with an audience, um, the timing and the rhythm, that there's a lot of comedic timing in, mm -hmm. in the piece. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't noticed that. I'm not a laugh out loud kind of person, so I didn't, it didn't mm -hmm. come to my um, experience. But having others around me, it was really, it was a new layer to see last night. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of comedic timing in your work? Yeah. It was right before we went on, within 10 minutes, we had maybe the first conversation about that where I said, oh, wow this may not be a laugh out loud piece. And we often make shorter works and they often have like, there's a, a little more of a punchline. Uh -huh. And um, I think that this whole piece is stretched in a way where the whole thing might be absurd, certainly, yeah. and funny to some sensibilities, but how do you spread the like, Oh, over like <laughs> 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, so uh, the first time I could really hear the audience laugh was quite a ways into the piece. I'm sorry, I'm going to jump ahead. Mm -hmm. But uh, it certainly filled me with glee because it was uh, to Stockhausen. Mm -hmm. It was such an abstract moment. Mm -hmm. And he has this three note pattern with mm -hmm. an erratic timing and we try to cram uh, the YMCA gesture yeah. so four letters into every three note bundle and we just do that for three minutes and it was like a laugh festival yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah well but you know th that moment is you're revealing the task once mm -hmm. you do it the second time, it's pretty clear what the task is yeah. <laughs> and um, the difficulty uh -huh. in <laughs> accomplishing the task. And then using the YMCA gestures is so iconic. Mm -hmm. And then the juxtaposition with the, the piano pieces, mm -hmm. it just adds that kind of awkwardness. I think mm -hmm. this is inherent in what you, you said, you know, how difficult it is, but it also uh, the way I think of it is that we fail. Right. We can't. We can't be on time. Right. And we've been doing that particular thing since we. That was one of the first things we. Did. That was in our first rehearsal period. Three years ago, almost. Three years ago. Yeah. But we can't. It's too hard to get it Still, right. And right. so yeah. you get to see us fail and mm -hmm. fail and fail and and mm -hmm. that. That's okay. Mm -hmm. It's so Baldessari like that um, thing we talk about mm -hmm. in the slideshow. Not to. Click here to see <laughs> us talk about Baldessari, <laughs> but it's the sweet spot uh -huh. because we can be 100% earnest in just trying to be as perfect as possible. Mm -hmm. And um, all of us can enjoy that it's funny. And it, it really uh, helped us express uh, to the dancers our sensibility about how to address humor mm -hmm. as a performer. Mm -hmm which is certainly, like, there's zero clown no, in what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> zero. Yeah. And it's just about crafting scores that have a nice opportunity uh -huh. for us to, to just strive for perfection. Uh -huh. So when does I'd the, say there's oh. zero acting. Yeah. That we're just we're I don't just quite trying. Trying. Yeah. Clown is a technical term. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm yeah. definitely meaning, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. synonymous to yeah. acting. Yeah. Yeah. That, no, that's that clear. You just try your damnedest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and we see you get in your yourself's way. Mm -hmm. You know, you're being yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's not neutral either. Mm -hmm. So the task is, it's what's pushing you, but you get to kind of almost have a, see a glimpse into somebody's personality as when, when the smile, when the like, comes up or when, you know, the... Mm -hmm. Well, you get to see us looking at each other. Yeah, at that point you're four. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we're all, um, we're looking in and we rotate. Uh -huh. So we hope that we're offering the whole choreography mm. generously to the audience mm -hmm. and at the same time to each other in an intimate mm -hmm. space. But we make sure that they get to see faces. 
It makes me think about also how you're staging the piece with the the legs, the curtains are raised, so we get to see glimpses underneath, we get to see the lighting instruments, mm -hmm. um, as well as, uh, as dancers coming and going, and depending on where you're seated, you could see a little bit more of entrances and exits, mm -hmm. because as soon as you walk on stage, you're, you're mostly seen, and then other mm -hmm. times, you don't get to see because there's maybe a piano now in the way and mm -hmm. and what you your perception you're able to make that leap because you know, kind of know what's happening behind the piano from the little bit of information you're getting oh, yeah you yeah. set it up really um, generously even though you're masking some of the yeah the visuals it's <clears throat> When we were in residency he here, we became aware how different the view is from different parts mm -hmm. of the house. And some people can really see this beautiful uh, architecture, all these lines, and some people can't see it at all. And um, if at, when you don't have all the masking in, um, all that stuff you were talking about is visible, the entrances, and it's a... a peculiar thing that a lot of choreographers do that they ask the audience to pretend that they don't see it mm -hmm. and we weren't interested in that instead interested in making a thing of what you can see mm -hmm. um, knowing that there are some people who can't mm -hmm. so then how do we um, make something good for those people who don't get to see this not um, to be exclusive but more to include everyone who's over there and what they do see, and everyone who's over there and what they do see. Mm -hmm. I think also uh, hearing you describe what happens with the soft goods, mm -hmm. the curtains, makes me think about um, that we have both a very formal, clean theatrical space with the soft goods all in, and the very raw space. Um, this is just a big box with gear. Um, gear. <laughs> yeah. And that uh, one thing we are aware of is that some people think of us, might think of us aesthetically as, oh, we're the ones that really should be in uh, raw spaces. This formal space isn't appropriate for us. Mm -hmm. And some people maybe see us as the opposite. And the sweet spot is the change between the two. And uh, so we do that over and over again as many times as we think we're still, mm -hmm. it's still um, tasty. Mm -hmm. um, and so th there's the question of how many times can you shift it? Mm -hmm. And then there's also how long can you sustain the period of transition? So once we are aware that there are not many options for a dancer to disappear when the masking's out, um, and one of them is, is we're starting to see this repetition of a dancer walking along the edge, you know, mm -hmm. exposed, like, oops, I'm not supposed to be seen. So that ended up inspiring, oh, Tom, just keep going. And he goes for 17 minutes. Yeah. That's his dance. Mm -hmm. And then it spokes out. Um, so the space influenced the choreography. Yeah. You know, the reality of the of the kind of technicalities of entrances and view uh, perspectives mm -hmm. and sight mm -hmm. lines, and also yeah, diving right into the um, the problem mm -hmm. and making it the jewel, mm -hmm. the favorite bonbon. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tom's passing back and forth is is definitely a favorite part, and um, it was it came from a problem. I'm going to jump chronology and actually go into the future because... Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking rules already. Um, eventually, this piece will just be a duet. And right now, you have nine performers plus the costume designer and the crew chief pre-show. Yeah. Do you think you'll recruit a technician? Oh, to play? To play. Do you think that Tom's... You know, the necessity of, of yeah. performers having to kind of skirt the edges to mm -hmm. come and go, that spoking, that, that, that uh, 
resulted from that situation, mm -hmm. how much are you going to keep mm -hmm. in the duet form? One start to that answer is that we decided to not concern ourselves with that one iota mm. before we finished this run. Yep. And there's a little bit of planning and explaining to these venues what to expect, but they've been very generous mm -hmm. in not needing much explanation. They give us advice. Uh -huh. <laughs> one bit of advice is don't make it just a duet. Yeah. <laughs> and we're open to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, you asked specifically about the piano playing in the beginning. Right. I don't know if any of the sound score is going to stick around, or even there's going to be a piano, or if in there's the going to be, yeah. Right. All, all, there's. I feel like it's uh, wide open for debate what comes forward and mm -hmm. um, what develops. And I'm so happy we did that. We we wanted to not. Uh, we wanted to plan completely for this. Mm -hmm. I think that's also why it feels like such a celebration that it's three nights here in the McGuire and for the McGuire. For the McGuire. The scale of the yes. McGuire in terms of cast yeah. and everything. Yeah, and the community that it's based in. Yeah. I think going way back to mm -hmm. our whole history where we are so interested in. Uh, site specific and mm -hmm. specificity, but also in the, the appropriate and convenient mm -hmm. and then the inappropriate and the inconvenient. Mm -hmm. So, so far we've talked about, well, the rail and the piano and the things that are here and the mm -hmm. things that we used because they're here and mm -hmm. that are specific. But one of the things we've loved to do in making pieces is to take the same piece and switch it to a very different venue mm -hmm. and to figure out what becomes new and specific to, to that venue, but also bring something really inconvenient from the other mm -hmm. venue. Mm -hmm. And the extremes of that are performing <laughs> inside and outside. And like, yeah. okay, now we need a hose on the, th on the stage and a lot of dirt and flower pots. Or how are we going, there? okay, well, no, we're performing outside, so we're gonna bring our couch to the park to right. perform outside and make yeah. it really inconvenient. <laughs> Which we did. <laughs> yeah, like uh -huh. taking the wrong uh -huh. things. Yeah. Um, so some of that, Mm -hmm. may happen or or not we uh, right. what Kristen said we really decided not yeah. to yeah. Uh, make a piece that would be conveniently changed mm -hmm. and in fact we're more at home with the problem of a venue that's uh, doesn't that's not flexible mm -hmm. that's not accommodating mm -hmm. um, that doesn't have a lot of technical capabilities um, and so we treated next year's versions and sites as kind of a treat, like, oh good, they'll be, you know, just give us a stairwell in an old school or something like that, <laughs> right. and we'll figure out how to stage a duet there, and that will inspire us readily. Yeah. And for the years, and, and even preceding the three years, anticipating being here, uh, we were really concerned that there was no inspiration to be found mm. from this black box that could do anything we asked right. of it. Like, right. where's, I don't know, where's the inspiration in that? Mm -hmm. um, where's the rule and limitation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you brought pieces of the last three years with rehearsing at the Bryant Lake Bowl and rehearsing, I don't know where the bars came from. We'd love to tell you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, um, the metal ones, they're two yellow ones, were what we looted from the space formerly known as Space Space, uh -huh. um, where we rehearsed um, for the last 10 years up until January of 2013, very inconveniently losing our mm -hmm. very regular McGuire beloved. scaled yeah. um, space where we could leave junk yeah. overnight. Yeah. We had that for 10 years until we needed it. And then um, the other three bars are Xenon dance schools They've been very generous in um, both every time we've come to the walker, we come and pick up their bars and their class all crams on the perimeter bars, I guess, for mm -hmm. a week. Mm -hmm. And also every Wednesday we've rehearsed in the Kohl's Center. I laugh because uh, Arwen and I get to 
uh, the building a little early every Wednesday night throughout this fall and we go up and down the elevator and take bars from every floor oh. and bring them all <laughs> into that studio and then at the end of the night and our rehearsal would end after the elevator was locked so we'd have to get security mm -hmm. and we'd have to undo code boxes to get every bar back and it's part of the ritual. But Xenon, Xenon is where we teach and we've mm -hmm. taught there every Wednesday for 13 years. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and you teach contact improvisation. Yes. Yeah. It's our it's our ritual and it's our place for movement exploration mm -hmm. and it's our we scooped Jennifer from that community. Mm -hmm. She's someone who took our class for a lot of years. And uh, when we decided that we wanted to be really local mm -hmm. and really of what we were already doing, mm -hmm. that class became an obvious place to, to source from. We don't, um, we tell the story a lot. Mm -hmm. We, we uh, have loved studying contact improvisation and it's, it's one of the main forms that gets our body ready to do all of what we do in this piece, including rond de jambes and mm -hmm. high kicks. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's contact improvisation training that, that makes it possible for us to do those things. Um, but because we don't perform that, for a long time it was a question. We teach this class every single week for years and years and years, and then we make this choreography that's very different. Mm -hmm. And w that seems like a weird split, and why is that? And how can we, um, without performing contact improvisation, what's the other way um, to bring that class mm -hmm. into our, onto our stage? Mm -hmm. And it's everything about that class, including simply weekly cycles, mm -hmm. uh, being a, a, a measure of time. Mm -hmm. that, uh, infiltrated our process all over. It's uh, the form of taking turns, mm -hmm. um, which we used quite a bit over and over again uh, in the three years of creating this. And oddly, it's not what we've always done. It was a radical thing. We're like, oh, and let's call this structure taking turns. <laughs> and by that we mean I do something, then you do something. But we defined it. We got yeah. really intricate in defining uh -huh. Uh -huh. what is taking turns. Uh -huh. And uh, we've been teaching that contact improv class for every Wednesday for about 13 years continuously. And it was only, a, it, it took us a couple years maybe to figure out that the way to co-teach it is to take turns. Mm. So we borrowed it probably from our teaching practice. So I teach one week, she teaches the next week, and that's how we have a conversation. Mm -hmm. 10 years of mm -hmm. once a week. I had something and then I'll just keep, I'll go back to. Yeah. yeah. So the first part of the piece, yeah. Endless <laughs> Devotion, is that glacially slow, reoccurring yeah. phrase work. Mm -hmm. And it's also one of the only times you have everybody together. At least clustered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't remember what I was going to talk about. So in the piece, you go from there's this idea of taking turns and bringing the practice of um, rehearsal, mm. the repetition, the mm. different perspectives. You know, I'm watching, you're doing, you're doing, mm -hmm. I'm watching. Um, and, uh, and what is warm up, what is preparation, mm -hmm. what is performance, and, and weaving in, and also makes me think of activism too, that every, all of it is honored. Yes. There's not a, this is lesser than, mm -hmm. it's absolutely all equal mm -hmm. and, um, and uh, essential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that we learn from teaching mm -hmm. that class is sometimes the very best dancing that you mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. is, is in class mm -hmm. when people uh, are not worried about performing. Right. And so then, again, how do you take what is 
uh, juicy and honest and beautiful from that moment mm -hmm. Risk -taking. And, yep. and put it on a stage and convince yourself and your dancers um, to be the same. Mm -hmm. I think another thing that happens in training mm -hmm. in general, you know, in sports and in this class is um, getting better. Mm -hmm. And that that is an example of witnessing change and um, in studying material for the spine with Steve Paxton, there, he helps us experience that so beautifully. We do these asanas at the end of every session that are just ab work. Mm -hmm. And every day he adds 30 seconds. So we're, it gets, he makes sure we're at or past the edge of what we can pull off. Mm -hmm. And at the end of every one, he says, lie down, give yourself to the floor, long exhalations, watch the fatigue vanish. Mm -hmm. And it's the watch the fatigue vanish. It's so palpable. Mm. You just feel like, oh, I'm tired and I'm less tired <laughs> and I'm okay again. Yeah. And then you go for the getting yourself tired again, just so you can, and it, when I realized that it's not the asana, it's the resting mm -hmm. and watching the change. So endless devotion is wonderfully too hard for any of us to do. And there's a wide spectrum of training in the bodies of the nine dancers. Mm -hmm. And, um, but we all got better at it. Mm -hmm. And if any of us felt like we mastered it, we always had, we were ready to say, okay, then step wider. 30 more seconds, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. you know, yeah. there were all kinds of ways to make sure. Um, and then within that, there's this rond de thing that, <laughs> Uh, five of us do and it was kind of terrifying and it was wonderful it was literally like 30 minutes before curtain yesterday that there was this glee that erupted in the group that was basically like we think we can actually do it and so what happened there was some music playing that often triggers Ronda Jams later it's some Stevie Nicks that mm -hmm. comes on later and they started they had figured out um, a trick that was the next step harder. Oh, yeah. for the Because our yeah. Rondajan pattern is like, we knew it was, there's, there are these doubles that we knew were In just uh -huh. too hard. And we set, we committed to them about, you know, well, we started working on them in January, uh -huh. but with this cast about six months ago, I guess. Um, so uh, just that they came up with that joke, there have been so many great examples this week of, uh, the kinds of jokes the dancers make about their fears or their successes mm. with the material shows that our value system has very clearly been transmitted and mm -hmm. is shared mm -hmm. with the cast. Mm -hmm. yeah. How does endless devotion end? Where does, where's the seam into the next elm? One way it ends, what's been going on all along is when we hear the recorded music start, Jennifer and Craig are also counting every second from one minute mm -hmm. to the, um, through the sixth minute. Um, and the recorded music ends at five minutes and 57 seconds. So we hear Jennifer and Craig finish out the minute. And because of our own particular um, uh, absurd numerology, mm -hmm. uh, we actually go to 63 seconds. And uh, so you hear seven more seconds live. And there's silence on the other side of hearing the word 63. Um, but all nine of us mobilize instantly um, and shift activity and cluster, mm -hmm. um, organize instantly because the bars help us make a line mm -hmm. just by touching it. Mm -hmm. We go from a scattered shape to a perfect mm -hmm. little straight line. Mm -hmm. And then more music plays. And we leave. Dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. So your next section is called Elm. Uh -huh. <laughs> what is Elm? 
It's, it's ELM. It's the uh -huh. section that was uh, meant to highlight Emma, Layla, and Melissa. Uh -huh. What's funny about these titles and even the idea of these sections is that it, there, there are sections which highlight each of our populations mm -hmm. in the cast, but actually um, they're, they're maybe not highlighted any more than anyone else now. They, that uh -huh. was a c idea. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, but now everyone looks good in that section. It's not just about them. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, though they do have lovely moments yes. in, in those sections. Mm. Um, so the trio material, that came from working at the university? Yes, yes. And a lot of their movement, um, uh, we just lifted it up out of that piece and put it in here and haven't touched them, have hardly given them any notes, have really left it like a time capsule mm -hmm. in the piece mm -hmm. um, and put a lot of stuff uh, um, around it rather than messing with it at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. um, something that I think about that section mm -hmm. is uh, we let it get very <laughs> sparse. Uh -huh. There's some silence and there are some moments where there's really almost nothing happening. Uh -huh. And every time <laughs> it happens, Kristen and I look at each other and like, <gasps> can we really happening? let nothing happen like that? And it's pretty early in the piece yeah. for yeah. that much nothing. Yeah. Um, but we, we we, so and it would be so great. easy to fill it up and put some stuff in it. Yeah. Um, and we decided not to. It's going to get plenty dense. There's uh -huh. going to be, we need that mm -hmm. emptiness um, in that section. And that just, there's, I mean, there's a lot of order. There's a lot of, you know, counting the notes in scales. It's not chaotic at all. <laughs> but there's a lot of different kinds of movement, some stuff that looks like just walking. Mm -hmm. um, the bars are all in different places. We're where we look like we're, I mean, we have on just pantyhose on the bottom, so maybe we forgot to get dressed, but then very fancy ascots and dickies and, and <laughs> stuff. So maybe we are very fancy where, you know, it's a lot of, Mm -hmm. confusion of uh -huh. who we are and how we're moving and what kind of music is this. The section ranges mm -hmm. from the Stockhausen lecture um, to um, all the way through Schubert, fan, um, very elegantly played. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of everything's out there yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. I like how you were saying it's um, uh, the relationship to chaos that it's maybe seemingly chaotic, but it's actually incredibly ordered and repeatable and predictable mm -hmm. um, for us. Uh, not easy to execute in a um, uh, consistent way, but uh, what's chaotic is the instruction to the audience of how to look at it, I think. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really, um, I bet, challenging. Yeah, I want to I yeah. add my experience, but I don't think it's necessary. <laughs> yeah. I think everybody's seeing it differently. And, yeah. And, uh, and that, you know, especially with the f how you start the first um, part mm. of the piece into that part, it's, uh, it feels the more kind of clinical, mm -hmm. uh, dry, conceptual, it, it definitely has that um, potential to be alienating and, mm -hmm. um, and, and yet it actually informs the rest of the piece and, and it builds and, and, mm -hmm. and it pays off so well mm -hmm. that you don't, it, it, do that asana. asana. <laughs> Watch the fatigue vanish. <laughs> right. A little I think, bit. Yeah. I think there's something else in that section that's important, which is that we stand together at the bar and do ranj jumps. We use a bar the way a bar is supposed right. to be used, mm -hmm. um, which that decays in the piece mm -hmm. significantly. But, but that is the moment. And, and that particular moment is another place where there is a perfect form. There's a way to do a ranjajam, and we're all trying our best to do it. And you really 
because we're all lined up and we're in unison, you really see the variety of training mm -hmm. in that moment. Mm -hmm. And we all got better at rond de jambes on one side because we did them so many times. Sure. And, with, and it, uh, we were insistent on giving zero coaching. We, we showed it, we're like, there are seven different rond de jambes. Do this, then this, and this, and people would wanna say, does the arm go up on the one, or does it, and we would just say, let's all do it around the bar and we'll all glean something from each other. Right. Um, and we all got a lot better in, in a way that was only dancing this piece is mm -hmm. the only thing that gave us that, that, that doing the, pay, the piece changed us all. What that makes me think of is another value of ours. When we, we often, in this piece, the, a lot of the dancers made up their own movement. We gave them scores and rules, mm -hmm. but they were making up their own movement. Mm -hmm. And it's something about investment mm -hmm. in, their, in what they're performing. And rather than mm. us saying, this is how you do a rond de jam, or this is how you do this move, mm -hmm. we were certainly, we're very much are crafting it and mm -hmm. determining how it's seen and what it is, but it's, um, mm -hmm. it also comes from them in a way that they can own it really fully. And yeah. that is, is something we've learned about how, how to be a 20 year collaborative duo where we have, we're making the pieces and we're performing them and so we have much more investment in the piece and we also have much more history together mm -hmm. and how to get a cast of people who can perform with us and have that same investment in the movement that they're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As one of the works in progress you did at the Bryant Lake Bowl, used the bar, everybody was at okay. the bar uh -huh. and not doing rond de jambes, uh -uh. but doing what is later a solo in the work. Right, Craig's yeah. solo? solo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. True, and, and we have several warm up rituals that um, there were three distinct populations other than ourselves in how we started working with this um, group, but we had shared warm-up rituals that, um, amongst all of them so that when we finally all came together, which was just in July, um, we could just turn on the music and everyone knew what to do and it was just the joke that uh -huh. like, I've never met you, but we know what comes next in this. Yeah sequence and uh, uh, so some of that material, what we do there is, has moved back and forth between warm up, choreography for performance, warm up, because we've demoted it out of mm -hmm. China 18, we've doubted it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the toggle between warm up and choreography for performance happens all over the place. Uh -huh. All right, I'm going down the list. Quartet. Mm -hmm. what, what consists of quartet? It begins when Arwen and I push Jennifer and Morgan, uh, who are poised on small platforms. Mm -hmm. We push them from wall to wall mm -hmm. towards each other. Huh. To the camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, to deposit them between them uh -huh. and send them off on their own to battle. Mm -hmm. That section features the mo movement that was made in the very first rehearsal period. Will you, because it's, will you tell January 15th? Oh Lordy, yeah. Uh, our first rehearsal process um, was in residency at Mansi in January of 2011. And on January 15th, 2011, uh, I took a cup that day's Tallahassee Democrat mm -hmm. and included it in our process. Um, and part of what we did in a very long session uh, was each, there were several scores, but we each had a page mm -hmm. or a section from that paper and a very long time to develop individual material from it, mm -hmm. to pull it from the page into the body. 
um, and those uh, are kind of the iconic individual phrases that we still retain. Mm -hmm. Is that that's a what, part of the story? Yeah, that's yeah. what Morgan's solo is and Jennifer's. That's what Jennifer's doing. That's almost all of her material. Because yeah. she also has yeah. another Mansi created mm -hmm. um, score. And we do ours over and over. Mm -hmm. And then those phrases have also been deconstructed mm -hmm. for our favorites. Yeah. And some of that original research was dealing with journalism and newspaper print and the mm -hmm. the evolution to online and mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, and then also narrative. Yeah. The novel. Yeah. And do you want to talk just a just a kind of nutshell of both of those and how they Oh, yeah. Connected mm -hmm. and not. Mm -hmm. I think that section is the most, um, especially the way it's been costumed, it's the most character mm -hmm. seeming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are a lot of different worlds happening. We call it quartet. It's funny because there is a quartet in the piece, but it, um, the section we call quartet um, actually has everyone in it, but they're in pretty different worlds. There's this set of backup dancers in shiny red and Craig is the um, <laughs> wild man at the bar in his towel and Morgan is in that elegant dress with, uh -huh. but with these uh, man big, gloves, big man gloves. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and Jennifer is crazy ballerina, orange wig and Sherbert. Yeah, yep. and we are um, <laughs> chickens in blazers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's really crazy worlds, uh -huh. and Tom's a ghost. Mm -hmm. and it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's kinda, uh, Quartet is so, an understatement. Yeah, yeah. 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 But um, a lot of more like character mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. we, I think we usually mm. um, play out. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I think of some of some of Jennifer's movement. She has a solo down by the curtain, and it it was one of the really kind of simple, dumb exercises looking at linguistics and meaning, mm -hmm. and looking at how you diagram sentences mm -hmm. and parts. How of you do how you mean one, like how like, one no, could? How, how do you? How are what is the what are the rules for diagramming sentences? Like what is and a is verb there such and what a thing is it? Or, or yes, okay, yes, there's something. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. it is a technical learn, thing. Yeah, okay. yeah. You uh, put the subject and then the verb and then um, lines off for adjectives and uh -huh. the special things for prepositional phrases and uh -huh. all of that and looking at those and I wondered a lot um, in trying to figure out is there. How, is there a language of dance? Is there meaning? How do we create meaning? How do you, uh, in, in, uh, with words, the way the meaning is created is the way that the words are put together as much as the meaning of any of the words. Mm -hmm. So um, was, is that true of movement? If you put this movement next to this movement, does it mean different, something different than if you put them in the opposite order or next to something else? And how do you make rules for which movements? You know, if you're trying to make a flowy dance phrase, well, what comes next is what feels organic mm -hmm. or something. But if that's not how you're making up movement, that's not how you order things, well, sometimes we have a list, and so the rule is that you follow the list, or sometimes we alphabetize it. Mm -hmm. But what if it was based on meaning? Mm -hmm. And what if you were trying to figure out the meaning based on the order? And so looking at diagramming sentences as a, as a way of making rules for what comes next and, and what it means. And so then assigning, um, looking at all these uh, at, uh, books with rules about grammar and assigning movement to words. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that was just uh, like the kind of, we sometimes call this like the, the dumb or obvious, just I was like, okay, so I'm trying to solve this problem. What is linguistics and meaning and dance? Mm -hmm. So just go to the textbook uh -huh. and try to make something yeah. with that. Yeah, and uh, 
I, uh, in the quartet, uh, I'm just scanning it right now mm -hmm. for uh, newspaper, mm -hmm. print newspaper forms mm -hmm. that are embedded in it. Um, it's really fun to just kind of pronounce them present after the fact. It's not necessarily what was intended in making it, but uh, we really steeped in studying what is a print newspaper mm -hmm. and where is it at in this cultural moment mm -hmm. on its way to death. Um, so things seem like when you were describing all the kind of characters in the beginning, I feel like that's very much the stage is a frame of say a front page with many stories started simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And that also just the form of interruption mm -hmm. is uh, present many times when I come out and get you and Jennifer, for example. Um, I also think of Craig, who is wearing um, little more than a towel around his neck at the bar. I sometimes call him the canary in the coal mine because his instruction is to bop when it's pop. So whenever his ear um, or sensibility tells him that the music is pop music, he's to bop, and when it's not, he stops. That's what he does. Um, but I think that that instruction is in relationship to seeing um, the wonderfully conniving tricks in advertising <laughs> in trying to fool us in uh, being able to tell when it's an ad and when it's editorial mm -hmm. material and watching the changing rules for they obviously it must be a rule that they have to say this is an advertisement and then they figure out how to match the font uh -huh. of the editorial and watching that game of um, one-upsmanship yeah. or that kind of trickery um, so I think he's the, this is an advertisement, or this is pop. Mm -hmm. Kind of amplified. I think in, just one last thing I can think of is we thought a lot about uh, or um, observed and um, uh, enjoyed how uh, print is lined up on page, mm -hmm. on the page. So a ragged left or a ragged right, left adjusted, mm -hmm. right adjusted. Yep. I think that um, the bars or the platforms coming in are making mar mm -hmm. columns, mm -hmm. you know, narrowing the column or the margin. And um, uh, a good example of a, a ragged um, left and a right adjusted mm -hmm. is, is an emerging form. Mm -hmm. And a left adjusted with a ragged right is a decaying form. So we're seeing both of those. Mm -hmm. I want to um, go back to what I was saying about character because I described it mostly in terms of costume. Mm. And um, I think Naomi, who did the costume, is phenomenal at seeing things that are there and making them mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. and a crazy version of what they are. Mm. But really, uh, like I described Morgan's m man gloves, there's something, it makes her hands um, bigger than they are, and she's a little sinister. Mm -hmm. And her newspaper was the front page, and it was talking about um, racial inequality and uh, like nasty stuff going on in schools. And it is sinister. And mm -hmm. and what the movement that came from that is remarkably related to the content, even mm -hmm. though she was not very much. She it, it, the instruction was not necessarily to play out the story of. Mm. In the words of the newspaper, sometimes she's doing the T and the D from the Tallahassee Democrat. Right. And sometimes she's doing the corner of the, the article. Um, and, and yet somehow all of the meaning from that. Whereas Jennifer, who's the one who's dressed as the weird in all the frill and stuff, she is doing um, this advertisement that has veily curtains over a big soft couch and lilies and white lilies in the back. Uh -huh. um, so that somehow uh, came through and yeah. then is um, uh, 
in a crazy way enhanced by the costumes. Yeah, mm. and still ties to dance as a profession, as yeah. a training, as yeah. a history, as a yeah. rule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah, I'm thinking about uh, in choosing newspaper as, mm -hmm. as something to study. Um, spending the three years both reading and looking at them. Mm -hmm. um, t in a way, two different activities mm -hmm. done on the same page. Um, and uh, watching how I read and looked at the newspaper at the beginning of the three years and about halfway through um, the f uh, there was an inversion mm -hmm. where I, I had uh, uh, my value system, I think, taught me to not even see the ads, taught me to censor that out right. of my vision, because um, uh, I thought they were deplorable, you know? And, yeah. and uh, you just look at something long enough and the the, the, the part you hadn't been seeing all of a sudden comes into relief. Mm -hmm. And I started saying, well, what if I look at them? What's kind of delicious about them? What are the patterns of what kinds of ads end up in which sections and what's happening with the bounce between the ads and the, and the stories? Um, so we started identifying as we got closer just this value system about inverting mm -hmm. what it might seem obviously important and then something else that's background, and how can we invert that back like and forth? Like Neil's story about Earl and Susan. Exactly. Yeah. Who's and, really the center? Oh, <laughs> and also well, and I so think that the that Morgan is the star doing a solo, and people were just trying to exit, and all of a sudden we're like, actually, you people who are just trying to exit and not be seen. Take let's, up for let's bring yeah. you up into mm -hmm. relief, mm -hmm. and actually put you in bright white, so you might pop. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. like, um, you know when we say we're doing like a piece inspired by newspapers, like yeah. that's, those are the forms that have sure. yeah. come forward. And just talking about the layout of the newspaper and thinking about how do you, how do you have multiple stories going simultaneously? Mm -hmm. How do you have multiple, have a big stage and have multiple things happening, but be able to see them all. What, what kind of framing do you have to do? And that's, you know, what the bars and the piano and the platforms and the curtains do a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but then it, it reminds me of what I was saying about contact improvisation class too, of like, how do you frame mm. that dancing so that it's not hippie rolling around contact but you get the beautiful part, you know, what, what, mm. what does it, what kind of box does it need around it or what other story do you mm. need to have going simultaneously so that you can see what all of the things, how they're different and what they're good at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One other newspaper <laughs> um, based operation is uh, correction. Mm -hmm. This is huge for us. Mm -hmm. And it's nice that we're in quartet and I, um, remembered while we were in that, um, because in a way this quartet section is a correction of the quartet we made in January, that we made, um, that was a true. Three years ago. Uh, no, I'm sorry, this year, January, okay. for the outlet series. Uh -huh. um, um, What else should I say? Uh, maybe I'll just stop it at that. We might yeah. discuss correction more. But yeah. in newspapers, um, super charmed by, it's just so old fashioned to print the corrections from the print paper a week ago. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in the age of the internet, where news stories are being thrown up before they're even sure it's all correct, and then they can just update it every five minutes. And we don't like, even stop long enough for typos anymore. Right, right. It's just and, part of the and, landscape now. So, you know, I'm, I'm super sentimental about the old school practice of having to go to print mm -hmm. and having to get... Uh, Very deliberate. Yeah. yeah. 
The next section is China 18. Mm -hmm. How do we start with that? It has approximately 18 interruptions. Mm -hmm. It's a, a, a very fussy, simple and fussy structure um, uh, in that, that, that it, I think, expresses a lot about how we deal with time in that uh, we, we were working on a duet section, what we knew would be a duet section, and we had a bunch of material and were wonder and needed to figure out how it fit together. And there were little snippets. And um, it, was, it was after having made several things. And then we just said, well, what do we want to, which of all the things that we've made so far do we want to keep? And then there's all these sections. What do we do? So um, we made them each a minute long. And sometimes that meant we had to do things very quickly mm -hmm. to fit it into a minute. And sometimes we would do it at the uh, necessary normal speed and it would just be interrupted. And sometimes we had to figure out how to stretch it to make it fill a minute because they were not, it, they weren't things that were in themselves a minute long. Mm -hmm. Is that where some and of then, the like, um, uh, there's some partnering that happens yeah. when you stop Arwen from rolling. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of part of stretching it out? Oh, that's interesting. That's actually a fixed choreography based on a sculpture. Okay. But um, we do one minute of contact improvisation in this. Uh -huh. And um, you might be getting to what I'm about to say, so I'm going to let you finish your thread. Well, then... So then we were moving together through those minutes, and then we, <laughs> um, at, there's the point where it gets off, and uh -huh. I go, I'm on the half, uh, our minutes aren't lined up, so uh -huh. she moves on to the next section before I have, uh -huh. and then a place where we come back um, into the same timing. And then, and then from, so that was all very strict and mm -hmm. rules. And since then, we've edited in, and they're not actually real minutes anymore. Mm -hmm. They're 45 mm -hmm. seconds or something. But, but yeah. um, you know, there's lots of, of messing with it. But uh, making a super strict structure and then seeing what kind of what, what meaning and what um, dynamics and, and complications uh, and interactions come from this very dry, strict mm -hmm. time structure. Mm -hmm. I think that that's important in this piece because we're the choreographers. Everybody knows we're the choreographers right. and it's 20 years of us and it's a big celebration of us. And so it's going to be really loaded, emotionally loaded and meaningful when the two of us, when for the first time, it's just the two of us on mm -hmm. stage. And you've and closed so, some of the mid curtains. You've really made it very intimate. Mm -hmm. The right. scale mm -hmm. then is more. But so mm -hmm. to counteract, to, 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 to help it be more that way, but also to counteract it, we needed a really dry mathematical structure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, from the beginning of the piece, it there's a sentimentality that starts to come in, and I was surprised by it. And I might, What's I might, our last section called? Yes. No, I, see, I, I was very satisfied to see the sentimentals <laughs> was actually uh, the last section. But, but that I was surprised it was coming in, and I was trying to keep myself in check whether I was uh. adding 
mm -hmm. nuance to make it sentimental? Where does pop references, especially through the songs, mm -hmm. then coax some emotional, mm -hmm. you know, response? Well, this is a big question for us in looking at something like newspapers, yeah. where we're saying, oh, we're like so sentimental, so nostalgic for the the print media yeah. and this thing that it's dying, and and then the. Uh, um, language development, part of looking at the language development, those initial um, inspirations, was uh, watching my younger child learning to talk and seeing um, those phases go by that could never return. Mm -hmm. And I think the same way about mm -hmm. print media and in into mm -hmm. internet, like mm -hmm. those are phases that will never come back and mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, so easy to become sentimental mm -hmm. about. It's so incredible to me that you named that as an interest three years ago and what you've traveled through with your son, yeah. literally in the time of creation. Mm -hmm. Stories on, tops of, on top of stories. Mm -hmm. And do you want to talk about the significance of China and what we're hearing during that section? Yes. <laughs> it's garbage from the internet. <laughs> um, that... Um, uh, I mean, it's a very sentimental story for me. I was so tickled. I had a little email conversation going with Steve Paxton, and he sent a YouTube video of a, a big wild cat, I don't know which one, in a jungle looking in a mirror. Someone snuck a mirror. And I was like, why did he send that? And so I was like, oh, gosh. It's How do I reply to yes. this? <laughs> And so I was like trying to oh, what do I find words, and I was like, oh, I'll send him a video. So I was like, what's my favorite video? What do you send to him? And, and uh, oh, the source was, I don't even know what it is, dot com, uh, which is a, a place that collects miscellaneous. So there's a little curation, I guess. Yeah. It's not YouTube. Um, so I just scanned around it and found a video where someone had obviously taken um, some travel TV show that had been hours long and just reduced it um, to all the occurrences of the word China. <laughs> so it was probably like a three hour show um, condensed into a couple minutes. Um, and then I ended up sending him a picture of, or a video of um, balls on strings um, in pendulum motion. <laughs> um, so it was all the deliberateness of that, not much. Um, it sounds like the kind of thing I would make. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of thing I do to music all the time mm -hmm. just in, uh, because I think it's fun. Um, uh, I'm really interested in this piece. We've looked at the ethics of when can you use anything that you found elsewhere? When can you... Sound-wise. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, but looking at it everywhere. Um, and when is it uh, more ethical or beautiful or dot, 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 to include it whole, or is it better to make it your own and wrestle with it and manipulate it and chop it up and make something new with it, or is it better to not touch it at all? Mm -hmm. And I still, I go back and forth. I don't uh, feel very strongly one way or the other. Um, so it was really funny for me that it was something, it sounds like something I would do mm -hmm. when I manipulate things, but I didn't and I just stole. But then it, it, you did cut it up so that we use the, the words China as minute markers so that we can do our complicated mathematical score. Yeah, um, so there's, there, there's uh, both kind of opposite choices present right next to each other. Yeah. The whole unmanipulated by us and super manipulated by us. Mm -hmm. I want to say something about, um, about China uh -huh. too. Um, yeah. Something that is uh, interesting to us 
um, something we've learned from improvisation and from going back and forth from improvisation to set stuff is that that accidental um, amazing thing that you find and then when you find it then you recognize it and you see what it is and you see maybe mm. that it had that it's loaded that it's powerful that mm. it's meaningful that it's something and then you decide can you keep it with all of what it is do you like the ways in which it is evocative or powerful mm -hmm. and then you figure out how to either erode that a little bit or contextualize it or let it let it be how much to let it have its power. And the thing about finding the sound score mm -hmm. is you say, okay, so it's, it's saying China. Now mm -hmm. this is, you know, of huge contemporary significance, right. yes. the word China. Mm -hmm. um, and it's to kind everyone of- everyone on the planet. Mm -hmm. And just hearing that word over and over again, of course, reminds us of what it's like to, to walk around in the world right now where you're hearing it all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but, you know, is there a place, so you recognize, okay, so this is familiar and it's maybe powerful. Is it, is mm -hmm. it politically incorrect? Is it cultural mm -hmm. appropriation? Mm -hmm. At what point is it problematic? At what point um, do we have an opinion about China? Do we, you know, so like knowing that it has all of that power and then trying to figure out, can, can we use it at all? Is that power just too huge mm -hmm. or... Or is it the right um, amount of cultural context and commentary to have it? Mm -hmm. um, and then also knowing that something else happens when you hear, for me, I know other people have said they ha don't hear this, but for me, when I hear China, 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 that <laughs> thing happens when you start to say a word so many times, it starts to sound like something else. And sometimes yeah. it sounds like they're saying vagina. <laughs> and then that's really like this other cultural <laughs> piece. Um, and, Peace. <laughs> and can we live with with that? And mm -hmm. Maybe I can live with China more if it's got vagina in it, right. <laughs> or, you know, or maybe not. But like a lot. <laughs> I love how you described um, uh, aiming for meaning and meaningfulness in our practice. Um, again, like both an emerging form or a decaying form. Mm -hmm. And there's this thing that we've kind of lost uh, that's become distasteful for us, which is like, we want to make a piece about newspapers. Sure. And that like sticking with it and making sure everyone can keep it, that it's very clear all the way through that it's telling everyone something meaningful about that mm -hmm. or that we have something meaningful to say on that topic. Um, so there's an arena for research that we care, there were several of them that we cared a lot about, mm -hmm. but I, I'm, I think we did a good job of not making sure you see newspaper right. or, uh, or language development in right. toddlers yeah. Yeah. in this, but it's all over it for us. So um, I'm glad I gave the kind of dopey roundabout version of why China is in it, which is that noodling around on the internet. Yeah. It's the enemy mm -hmm. of print newspapers, which I'm fighting for. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's great to find something very evocative from that really not trying very hard to be mm -hmm. um, uh, important mm -hmm. or smart or... Um, uh, The end. <laughs> but not the end of the piece, but yeah. The, the other thing, I, I, I mm. like the way Heidi has lit that section. Mm -hmm. It looks to me like we're floating in nothingness. And the way it's costumed, I mean, the floor is so shiny, and then we're wearing these weird pink and blue, like we could be weird. Mm -hmm. We look like weird Chinese dolls or something, you know, yeah. something mm -hmm. strange. But um, uh, that floating mm -hmm. thing makes me think a little bit just about how we think about meaning and, and context. And it's this thing plucked mm -hmm. out of, 
you know, compared to the mm -hmm. rest of the piece where you say, here is the wall, look at the wall, and here are the boxes, and we're going to bang into those boxes, and here is, but in that one is um, floaty, and you can't see the architecture very much. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also thinking in terms of design with the costumes that, you know, I expressed something that was like a little bit uh, close to f as if I was saying we're off the hook about meaning. We're not at all. Mm -hmm. Like Arwen said, as soon as the word China's in there, we're like, wow, what's that doing to everything? Mm -hmm. Including um, the uh, Naomi like costuming the same way we did when we did it for ourselves, which is just grabbing whatever you can. So I just, th having the word there makes me think about where was everything made? Yeah. Um, and how are we in the world? What are we making and putting in the world? Um, and how does it relate to China? Mm -hmm. And fabric mm -hmm. and clothes. Production. Yeah. 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 And uh, the next section is called Mr. Hijack. Mm -hmm. That was a just a teeny thing about Mr. Hijack. We did that piece for over a year. Um, doubled. The whole song happened twice with a little bit of manipulation beyond that. Um, and between August and December, that was one of, we desperately tried to make it a shorter piece. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the biggest, like, chop it in half. We only hear the song once. There are other doublings in the piece that will satisfy that for us. And that's a section that we thought of as featuring Tom and Craig, who mm -hmm. were people we mentioned, the Earl and Susan piece mm -hmm. that we made with mm -hmm. for Bedlam's Ten Fest. And that's where we met Tom and Craig mm -hmm. and pulled them forward from that. And those moves were their moves and everyone else's moves um, in that piece. Mm -hmm. they, they do everyone's choreography in that piece, which uh, is... I mean, them doing their own moves, I talked some about that, mm -hmm. and the investment in your own moves. Mm -hmm. But them taking other people's moves, you know, I think it goes back to that question Kristen said, like, are you allowed to use anyone mm. else's music? Are you allowed to use something that someone else made? Well, we're, as choreographers, we're allowed to use the dancers' moves because they're in our piece, but are we allowed to use dancers' moves who weren't in the piece? Like, when is it, what is stealing and what is commentary on and mm -hmm. when is it ours? to manipulate is a, is a mm -hmm. big question, and we did mm -hmm. um, take those moves from those other dancers. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I, um, that piece, we performed it on the Bryant Lake Bowl stage three times, two, multiple times, mm -hmm. and that's a tiny little stage, and that was coming in here. That was one of the biggest questions. What I loved about it on the Bryant Lake Bull stage is that like, we just don't fit. Uh -huh. And it's like they're smashed up against us and they're, they're big and they're moving fast and we're like taking up a lot of weight and um, mm. it's a pressure cooker. Uh -huh. And so oh, this big old space, well, how are we gonna keep any of that um, in, in this? space mm -hmm. and then that was another one of those times where the problem really became the bonbon mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah where we we dance the first part of it real so far down it's almost not seeable and on those little tiny platforms and and then through the piece the curtains open and the whole stage is revealed again and then what what i think happens is that uh we've gotten used to the scale. By then in the piece, we've gotten used to the scale of this theater. And then to close it off, and then when you open it up again, it suddenly is huge again, and you see, you see it better than you saw it before. Mm -hmm. You um, incrementally get yeah. back to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, George Bopp? What is George It's Bob? so simple. <laughs> it's, it's so guilty. simple. We, I think we look at each other like that because we're kind of guilty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guilty of loving the pop song. Mm -hmm. 
um, guilty. We really talked a lot about if we could handle the religious references mm -hmm. in the song. Could we mm -hmm. own that? Did we really, how could we put mm -hmm. that um, guilty because it is so simple? Because we're, mm -hmm. um, uh, there's so much charisma displayed. Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to figure out uh, how and why I liked certain songs mm -hmm. and how and why I select songs for choreography. Because there are lots of songs I like that I don't want to make pieces to and there are pieces I don't like that I think are great for choreography. Mm -hmm. So what is that? And I had a small collection of songs that um, have a, a primary singer and a chorus or a choir. And there's some kind of either call and response or doubling. Mm -hmm. The relationship between those two groups of voices I started to identify. And uh, uh, the thing I wanted to fulfill that I f felt was something that reminded me of how cassette tapes work mm -hmm. and uh, just the tape passing through the machine and something I think rubs, it rubs against something and that reads it and it stops and there's no information to come through the speakers and then it plays and you hear it. So whenever the chorus role came in, it made me think about tape passing through a machine and coming through speakers. And so I tried to make that with bodies. Mm -hmm. And so one person in that dance, um, when they hear the chorus part, they slide, and when they stop, they stop. And that's it. And I could watch that forever. I've been watching it for years and dance after dance, and I love it. Um, when paired with a second person mm -hmm. who is bopping, and we gave them, uh, I think, the right amount of structure, which um, was borrowed from a voguing workshop that we commissioned from Gregory Grube. We had a one-day voguing workshop, but we think it's funny that, I don't know, it's pretty standard jazz warm-up, which is eight counts of head isolations, eight counts of shoulder isolations, uh -huh. eight counts of ribs, uh -huh. hips, knees. So that's one way to describe what's happening. Mm -hmm. All to um, George Harrison's My Sweet Lord. And the second part of what, I mean, we call, mm -hmm. the, the second part of that section is a trio for Morgan, Tom, and Craig and their instruction it, they go through their choreography from before. Um, Tom and Craig do the, all their Mr. Hijack choreography, and Morgan does her solo from the quartet, but they are supposed to keep both their hands attached to the bar. Mm -hmm. And what it creates, I mean, uh, they can move their body in relationship to the bar to make it convenient, or they can move the bar in relationship to the body to make it convenient. but. They're all three trying to, so that's a problem in itself, but they're all three trying to do it simultaneously. Mm -hmm. With the same bar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's pretty different from night to night, mm -hmm. how they handle it. Mm -hmm. um, they're, it's, it's wildly dangerous and inconvenient. The bar breaks apart. It becomes so far from a ballet bar. Yeah. Um, it's Sorry, what, Xenon. <laughs> uh, and... And they have to do so much negotiating in the moment because they have a strict choreography that they have to get through and the landscape is just not reliable, <laughs> reliable or convenient or easy in any way. So they're so alive in that moment just to survive. Mm -hmm. Another layer to what's going on is Craig and Tom's material um, they're each executing what has been, they're in pretty much constant contact. Mm -hmm. It's a, a contact partnering duet. So they're separated from each other and the bar is the other person mm -hmm. for them. And when in contact with each other, there's a lot of taking turns doing to the other or being done to. 
the original impulse for that stuff was all shoving or receiving a shampoo. So <laughs> that, that uh -huh. kind of set the tone for those extremes. Um, so you're watching them not just attached to it, but um, trying to have a bar for which they have no control over when and how it'll move um, interpret it as shoving them or shoving it. Mm -hmm. So wonderfully complicated. <laughs> <laughs> and, and sentimentals, bringing the whole piece together. Mm -hmm. It's movement wise, it's almost a perfect reprise of China 18 with a few of the minutes removed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally different sound. Um, so we're going back to the duet. Yes. It's the opposite. You know, if I said it was mathematical and uh, numerical and the way that the uh, China and, and that and all of its political connotations and then the, the, the sound score for that is, is um, really the opposite. It's so emotional. It's sentimental, it's pop songs, um, uh, but ballad, like, ballad yeah. pop songs, not um, dance mm -hmm. pop songs. Mm -hmm. um, Although, I mean, that's very much, I think, the uh, audience experience. We're holding math in our heads, though. We're resisting dancing to the music by, um, we've memorized where the one minute mark, where the two minute mark, where the three minute mark is in that stretch of pop songs and we're triggering um, internally that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and recognizing the longer we dance to this music, especially if we kind of like it, um, which has changed over time too, how much we like them, uh, it's going to seep in, but we're like resisting a little bit. Mm -hmm. which, which we believe, I think, gives gives the audience room to have that emotional experience rather than us having it for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was the response when you were talking to people last night? Mm. Were you surprised by some of the, what people picked up or had questions about? It seemed like you had a lot of conversations afterwards. Yeah, yeah. One of the most consistent things I heard was that it didn't seem very long. We were a little horrified at how long it ended up, how little we managed to trim out of it. So it's 90 minutes with some pre-show. 80, 80 maybe. 80 plus pre-show. Plus pre-show. Pre yes. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, actually, I mean, I can be kind of confident because um, uh, there's a recording that they push play on. Uh, that only pauses twice, so it's math. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one thing, we can take turns. You know, on opening night, the people who come up and say things mostly say compliments. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I, I heard a lot of people talking about the space, though, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that comes from two things, what Kristen said about people's expectations about where we mm. were performing, that this is a lot of people have seen us at Bedlam and at Red Eye and in, um, you know, basements, basements <laughs> yeah. and right on concrete floors and mm -hmm. dirty places with broken glass and stuff, and mm -hmm. so they are a little surprised whoa, I jacked at the walk, what's that going to look like? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so that looks new for them, um, but also because of how we, all the things that we've said about how we used it, that it, it makes people see the space, and so they're more likely to talk about it mm -hmm. um, than they often would be mm -hmm. uh, when looking at our work or at dance in general. Mm -hmm. It's funny, you talked about time, I talked about space. That's what you see when you see dance, right? Yeah. Time and space. Yeah. That's what people talked about. Yeah. Check and check. <laughs> Perfect.
Yeah. Well, thank you so much for this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.